extension is not the proof of the net addition will not come to order. Uh, roll, will you read this pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Collins. Here. Mitch Daniels. Here. Roland Kierall. Here. Roland Kierall. Roland Kierall. Here. Bob Falk. Here. McDavid Rowan. Here. Keith Kidry. Here. And Monty Vegas. Here. Mr. President, we have a quorum. And you might want to remind Mitch that he cannot vote. Um, you got that, Mitch? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. I don't want to hear you voting. <laughs> You can talk, you can't vote. Okay, you've been provided with a copy of the minutes of the last regular meeting and the corrections, additions, or deletions to that meeting as presented. Move by Bob, second by Monty. Any discussion? All of you have signal by Bob, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay. Join the meeting. Okay, I have nothing to report other than to thank God that the hurricane moved so fast through our area that it didn't didn't do the potential damage it could have done had it been moving slow. We were very lucky in that matter. Of course, you look at Grand Dow, Fouchot, Leville, and, and Golden Lettuce, they weren't that lucky. All in all, they did dodge the board. Anybody in the audience for the purpose of addressing the board? Mr. Woodrow, you can't address the board, or you just hit that tent. I'm just here to attend, but uh, as I've already mentioned to, to Wendell, one of the things that uh, I'd like to help financially if I can as representative, but I'd like to see the monitoring system for the floodgates be upgraded and somehow integrated with the uh, terrible One Parish system. Their system seems to be quite state of the art, and uh, just let it be known that I would really like to see uh, I'd like to see ours, which is now dialing and calling in data loggers, be ultimately uh, upgraded to a more online uh, utilization with tracking and timing the way that they have it. So. And it was just a bit of cost to do something here. Uh, we had looked at it a long back. Uh, I don't know exactly, but maybe uh, 15,000 comes to mind. Uh, some we can live with. Yeah. Thanks for your comment, Joe. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? We'll move on to the uh, general manager's report, Wendell. Okay, we'll start with going through the slides. Kind of hard to see, but we got our um, Humvee right here to uh, handle water emergencies, and we have our uh, five-ton truck here, um, ten wheel positive traction, and luckily we didn't have to use it uh, for this long. Uh, sort of going around the levee, just checking things out. A couple of days uh, later, these are some terraces being built uh, north of Bully Camp. That's a big open water area that. Uh, we have a lot of weave action against the levees, so it's uh, going to be real helpful to protect the total levee. But I was uh, kind of surprised they had already gone forward with it. And uh, what, what I tried to do after every storm is inspect the levee, but also the debris line tells us exactly where the water is when the weather is too rough to take a look. And this is it. It's really impressive when you look at the. Uh, Going more way north. You're going to invest in a new video system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going north to south. Uh, again, we, we just started the bully, uh, bully camp right here. And you can see 
uh, almost on the whole system, you didn't see more than maybe a plus five at the most, with stuff just <coughs> being on the, the base of the left, not even getting uh, on, the, on the slope at all. Uh, this is from base on south. This is the work that our guys have been doing. Uh, main contract in place, a ton of dirt on this side, and they have shaped this to an 18 foot elevation. And it's really impressive. Again, we're gonna have to be unlucky to pull it. Uh, we've got the elevations that, that uh, work really well. Uh, this is just north of the boy camp itself. We've raised this area to 18. We just finished raising the ramp that goes to boy camp. Uh, close this on the, the boat launch right here. And uh, to think back, you know, we're talking, the storm hit October 28th. Well, October 28th, 1985 is the last time we flooded. And right over here, there was a parish pump station over a little five foot levee. We had our 10, we had, get away. We had our 10 foot levee right here and right here. And we asked the parish to let us take out their little pump station and let us build a 10 foot levee here. But they said they needed to pump. They were more afraid of uh, flooding from drainage than from uh, from a hurricane. Uh, we had just put, built pump station number one uh, right behind the park Golden Meadow. And it had more capacity than all of the parish pumps on the west side. So we felt it was a good gamble, but uh, they felt it wasn't that. But So we had an overtopping here and cut that little levee down to minus 30 foot elevation. We had to put sheet piling in there, get it, but to get this up to 18 is what we were talking about. And again, going south, again, our levee is close to 18 in most places, but we found a couple of low spots. We got our machinery. So again, dig from the bar canal, set this up here, and they'll be placing it on top. And this is ongoing. We'll have all of this up by next year. This is outside the system. This is a little uh, uh, marsh apron that we built, the first marsh apron, 2002. Still doing it now, protecting the toe of the levee. And then you have some terraces on the outside. Again, another place that the levee was a little bit low that we went back and we <coughs> throw the stuff up here. We'll get this up and it'll be ready for next hurricane season. That's that terrace again, that's that little marsh area. And here's the debris line. I was getting a little bit thick as we're getting closer to Golden Meadow. We'll be back in the same area, getting closer. And this is the new bit of terraces that were built two years ago. They did a really good job. And here's the debris on the toe of the letter. Again, this storm didn't have a buildup, you know, because of moving so fast. Usually you get a one elevated first, might get to one foot elevation, a little bit more. Then when the, the, the really powerful part of the storm comes, it really pushes that water up. And the wind was blowing pretty hard before we would start to see the water come up. And that was a, a great benefit to us. Again, and a similar picture. Okay, here's a little bit of a corner where we see some build up in the debris, and it might have pushed up to six foot. Of course, every time you get any type of a right angle to an acute angle, you tend to get a little bit more of a build up. But we didn't see the giant build up. This is at the boat launch at uh, Golden Meadow behind the park. And the water didn't get much higher than this at this time. You can see the sun just kind of going down. Uh, we see this, I mean, somewhat often, but here's the launches that here under the water. But this is around three to three and a half. <coughs> yeah, and another technical improvement, we need to get another camera. <laughs> Some problems with this one uh, during the storm. And this is on the inside, the ramp. Uh, you can see the power pole and uh, the glove over here. And our guys walked around the wires to get in. And I wanted to mention too, before this, uh, you know, this season, we had six times that we prepared to do emergency preparation. We got on standby. One time I called our guys on a Sunday because it looked like more cold war was going to hit us. And of all those times, we never did get into emergency procedures, except for this storm. We thought we might get out of it with a bunch of shoe shoes this year, but uh, this last one had some pop and uh, didn't quite get through all of it. And again, here's a pump station. Here's down at, at uh, the south of the lock, again, water over LA-1 as, as usual, but not as high as the uh, past couple of storms. Here's the debris line, so it's right here, right after the worst of the wind was blowing. Uh, we get a little more damage on our plastic sheet pile, but no damage on the levee. I mean, it worked, and uh, uh, for the amount of money we place in there, it's a, it's a, it's a small repair to get that uh, in shape. But most of the sheet pile uh, came out real good, did its job. Uh, here's that pump station before near Yankee Canal, getting built up up in the corner, but still another 12, 13 feet of levee above that, that five foot elevation. 
again, the green line. So as you can see, most of the places, this is looking, this is the loop uh, wall, that's at a plus 17, so it's great to see our level. You know, I remember when they first built it, our level was like about a little under 10 feet, and that wall used to stick up way above it. We have raised uh, the levee to the point that uh, you see, uh, or you see the, the, the wall. Again, the green line, some more, uh, these are steel pipes we put in to protect the total levee, and it's done a great job. With all the wind, and we know that the waves were really, they had, they had, some, they had some energy in those waves, and, and no erosion at all. And no tiebacks on those, huh? No tiebacks, no. Just we use the water balance on either side to keep it, uh, it's, it's just absorbing, absorbing the wave uh, energy. And again, things look good at the, at the, the lot. Here's close to the loop wall right here. It's a T wall, because it's a real strong wall, even if water would get over the top of it. Again, we've raised the levees to match the height of the wall. That's the inside. And again, you can see that the real is not too impressive. Here we're approaching, again, another shot near Yankee Canal. But, uh, you know, here we're uh, at the LL and form, the Schwest form. That's a uh, very boat out here. And you can see the debris line just came up a little bit. One of the, it's, uh, again, damage on the outside. The power line took a beating outside of the system. <clears throat> and then uh, some of the guys I've forgotten that the Corps of Engineers along both the LLD form and the Colby form put plastic sheet pile, but they, they put it inside of the toilet level and put rocks on it, and the storm uncovered it. I mean, I was just talking to Drake about, look, we need to start maintaining all the way to the edge of this. And Drake wasn't aware that it existed on it, and most of the guys did. But uh, the storm exposed it, so a little bit less work for us to show that exposure. Again, same thing here. And this is on the outside, and this is all, this is going toward loop. And if you see the debris line, right, the corner is not too bad, but this is the highest debris line right over here. This is going toward uh, where the Alas are, where, where the loop is located. It kind of goes in and goes out a little bit. And you can see right over here. And here we figured it might be a nine foot differential from the debris line to the top of the level. Nine to 10 would go estimate. And that's about a plus six, so we got to guess. Uh, here's that in Tobley. This is what uh, was exposed in Tobley. This was all overgrown with grass, but uh, the storm pushed it. Uh, this is at the Golden Cutter Pump Station flood wall. And again, that's about a five foot elevation right here. Okay, all along here. And that's a closed in area. That, that, you know, that's a little bit of a cup area. You expect water to get a little bit higher. What's good, uh, we're going to talk about the project that's going to build, put three more feet over here. We're going to go from about a 13 to 16. And that's the low spot. That's the low spot on the whole uh, 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 east side, uh, west side. It's right there at that uh, pump station. Again, going through back, again, the green line pretty consistent all over the area. Uh, this is by Apache. And uh, there used to be a wall 12 feet high. We covered it with 11, 17 feet high. So no, no risk over there. This is south of Apache going toward the uh, uh, Pluggy. And again, getting bored. It's just nice to see that uh, in the debris line of, of uh, five feet is that, that far away from the top of the lift. I've been kind of looking at talking to some, uh, some computer people to see if we can get Hurricane Laurel, which pushed the 17.2 foot uh, elevation of Grand, uh, Grand uh, Chagata, you know, like Charles. If we put Laura and put it in the worst possible situation coming at us, I'm curious to see what that elevation might be. The Grand Chineers right on the coast, we think the Barry Isles and a little bit of marsh and a little bit of the things that we have might knock that 17 feet down to maybe 15 feet. But I don't know. It's a, it's a discussion I always have. I always ask what would happen if that storm had hit us the worst way. And this is a section K in Terrible that we help them with. And, uh, Here's the debris line on, on that level, but portions of K, I mean, K used to be just a, a little mole here when we had our, our mitigation levee, you know, four feet, five feet high. But the mole here is uh, starting to turn into a mountain. It's really, really amazing. Uh, it's starting to look like a levee. This is some of the worst areas right here. And then you get, this is the board that was put in, uh, uh, terrible, terrible parish along with uh, the levee district. 
install this in Grand Pie. This is the exact location that the gate is going to be. And basically built it up where it could protect the 10 foot surge. Now you got marsh on this side, but just stopping the efficient flow in a channel slows stuff tremendously. Even if water would have got around, it would have taken a long time for the water to get around. And a lot of water had to get around to start flooding people. So uh, this, this stopped uh, a, 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 just a, a great amount of water from getting in, into the, the areas that protect North Lucretia and Terrible. And on this, uh, this job on K, we just dug sidebar. So if there was a lot of good stuff, you had a big levy, a lot of dirt to work with, and the place the material wasn't good, we didn't have much. But uh, the, uh, the inspector showed us this. This is about 30 feet across at about a 10, 11 foot elevation. And then you don't just show it off, you know. Now there are other places that you just have a, a five and six foot elevation, but now the plan is to start taking where you have some excess and bringing it to a uh, less material. And there's also some FEMA uh, money that's going to be used to bring in 55,000 cubic yards for those uh, low areas. Section K is actually starting to look like a lever. You can see this shot right here, it goes on top. Here's the base. And uh, again, this, this is the highest part of uh, that level on that side. All right. Again, uh, the hurricane uh, came three or five years after uh, Juan. Juan's the last time we floated inside the system. And we gotta kind of remind people that, that we still can't flood, but uh, we, uh, yeah, we have improved it. There's a couple of little things we need to get done. I'll show you those, those uh, gaps that we have. And we're very close to getting those done within a year to two years to be completely. Get all the gaps done. And the other big thing, of course, is to turn the rules for the game into lock. But uh, anything when hurricanes hit us, what do we need to talk about? You know, it's 110 miles an hour, it's category two, but 111 is a category three. So you had uh, some of the forces that you have a category three, especially with guns. And again, Golden Meadow appeared to get the worst of it in our area, along with what happened in Louisville and Fort Grand Isle. Any other comments on Zeta? That was all wind damage in all the others. So that it doesn't protect oh, wind. Exactly. Yeah, those are places. And that's you know, that's, that, that's a big deal. Again, wind is kind of sporadic. If I hit four or five miles of the road, skip, water will skip out. If you, if you go, you get it. Yeah. Well, if I could have had a six or eight foot levy in the 85, I would have lost my home. Well, that's right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, the first place I saw water coming over was actually the Delta Home Road, you know, uh, for one. That's, uh, it's good to talk about one because people forget how bad it was. 70% of the land was covered. We had 30% of the homes and businesses flood. And uh, had we had $2 million in 1980, there's a chance we would have been poor enough for home in the levy that you wouldn't have flooded and most of the people wouldn't have flooded. So it's always been the hassle of trying to get money. But that's why we've always pinched every dollar. You know, we never know the next one's coming along, so we got to make sure we build the best we can afford and we continue to do that. 10 days for the water to get out of my house. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, well, yeah, the pumping was really bad on that side. Once they closed the hole on this side or the west side, that water was out in six days. Yeah, well, they get, get uh, completely uh, get back in the canal, not just out of the houses. Uh, again, go to, uh, the gold metal pump station fund wall, we talk about it, it getting started. It will be completed by next year. And again, Joe and I will talk about that a bit. Capped outlay budget, uh, we had from last year's budget, we had $4 million in cash, we lined that up to spend. But 1.8 was in, in uh, bonds, and, and we had to get it on the bond commission, and it looks like it might get on the bond commission this month. If we get that, we'll put that money, again, to build up enough money so we can build that lock. And we need to put a little bit more money to, build, to afford the lock. So we need to get it done. We have $5 million dollars to Paris, Google Mesa has provided to us. We're trying to build that $5 million to about a 12, 13 million dollar uh, amount so we can uh, get it built. So that's what we're trying to do in the capital outlay for 21, 22. Uh, executive committee, I'd like to, the president to suggest uh, a date where we can meet to have, to talk about the spending of this money that we just uh, spoke about. So uh, sometime in the, in the next couple of days, we'll uh, determine what's the best day to have that meeting. We'll move the projects, the amount of money, and, and how we want to approach the spend well. 
And uh, that's all I have. Any questions for Wendell? Thank you, Wendell. No. Oh, engineer. Oh, wait, wait, one more thing. One more thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we're coming up to Thanksgiving, and you know, we, uh, we, we stay so busy look forward to it. You know, all the things that we talked about, it takes a long time to do all those things. You know, I've got back to the theater, you know, they bought the first few uh, levy boards that were there that, you know, uh, our guys understood we couldn't exist without that getting done. I started working when Leon was there and the FCA and get the group that we have over here. So number one, I want to thank all of our elected officials who have continued to appoint tremendous people on this board whose goal is one thing. I mean, this is what about focusing on what your job is. This board is here to keep all out of people's homes and businesses and doesn't vary from that. You know, everything we do is tied to that and you know it's just compliment and thanks to the board for doing that. I also want to mention Mary and Amy, you know, they, uh, no matter what needs to be done, whether it's past five o'clock, whether it's on the weekend, whether they're at the house, they do what it takes to get done. So from the office aspect, of the thing, look, in the field, look, in the storm, I told our guys, I said, look, we're going to headquarters out of here. If it gets too bad, we're gonna, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to the hospital. And that's where we're going to work out of if we lose communications. I also told them, you got the port commission building is 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 there if you need to run to it and the town town hall has a, a well built uh, town hall to, to do certain hurricane strength but also the pump stations you know we don't we didn't expect flood walls to get in the system so you got a lot of heavy concrete around you inside of the pump station and sure enough you know, they were out there with about 50 miles an hour and they they, they handled the pumps and man when it came when it hit they just had to stay in the pump station. And they did that, you know. And when we go into emergency uh, uh, operations, we ask for volunteers. We don't tell all of our guys they have to be there. You never know if somebody has a loved one that has to get out of the area. You just don't know what the situation is. And all guys, uh, they were there in the middle of the storm. They did what they needed to do. They didn't get hurt, which was good. But uh, they were out there. It's, 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 uh, it's a little bit dangerous, just like a lot, a lot of people do some dangerous work, uh, make things work. So we need to thank all of them. And the number one thing to thank are the, the, uh, the taxpayers. Without the taxes that they passed in 1996 uh, and in, in 2007, we, I don't know if we'd be here. You know, that's really what's made the difference. We had tremendous help from the state through the years. The beginning of the project, core federal money was important. But to keep the consistency going since 96, it's been the taxpayers' money that's kept us moving. So, uh, that we've got to give thanks, and that it's a big Thanksgiving that we've been through this past season and all the seasons since 1985, and not flooded. But I just wanted to mention that it's a, it's a when you look about having Thanksgiving, we have a lot to be thankful about. Thank you, Florida. Well, well, thank you, Florida. If it's possible, I know with all the COVID regulations, you have to watch what you do. If it's possible, work it within those regulations. I'd like to do something for all our employees that have worked so hard there to. I mean, it wasn't just this hurricane, the other one was oh, the bad but they were on call, they were available, they were there. They were I'd like to get something to, to reward us, you know, the shrimp call, the cat call, or barbecue, whatever we could do within the regulations of COVID. Would you see if it lined up something like that, we'll take care of it? Yeah, yeah. I'd like, I'd like to reward them, they were for yeah. us, so we need to show appreciation. Yeah. Anybody have any comments on this? I'd like to recognize you, Wendell, yourself for what you've done for the board and this whole levy system. Well, when you're in the room, quite a few days, we'll tell you. Well, you know what? Even if you make a lot of money, you don't got people around here that want to get it done. Yeah. You almost have to make two of them because some of us will always be working. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it'll hold the, it'll hold the number down. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'd like to thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's always be working. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say we've got evaluation team in on Wendell. <laughs> and it's to me, him and his staff, and we're very fortunate to have everybody, the employees in there, that they do an excellent job. And it, uh, outstanding is the highest rated, but I think we could do better. <laughs> <laughs> Money's locked over there because he knows the truth. This meeting's got to till 7 o'clock now, guys. Good job. Well, they do a real good job. And like you said, I just want to echo what the rest of the board said and also you said about the staff and the employees and everybody involved. You can look around and see the accomplishments and what we have. 
that's proof. This, the letter we have right now is real. It, it's something to be proud of, and, and you can thank yourself and the people who came before you in Wichita, past presidents, our current president, board members, and employees too, and staff, uh, because it takes more than just coming to work to, for your faith. It takes some dedication, and that's been proof of all, all, all this history of this letter. So well, I'm going to go back to the end. I'm seeing other people, the workers, be that way. Because the elected officials haven't appointed, haven't appointed good bosses, they don't work quite as efficiently as we do because the politicians don't always appoint the best people. But we've had fantastic people in Florida. Okay, that's enough. Hello, thanks for giving us more seat. Engineering reports, CPR, Daniel, you're here. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yep. Right, awesome. Uh, nothing much to really uh, report related uh, to the board. I just uh, I do want to echo um, Wendell's comments. Uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time after storms assessing damages and that kind of spend a lot of time down south of the uh, levee system. Um, and uh, we have a lot of projects down uh, Caminata Headland, Grand Isle, of course. So we've been busy uh and it, it's amazing uh you know i spent like last week down in those areas just a few minutes south you know of the, of the levee system is such a stark difference right yeah. um but we do get really complacent in general um either whether we live you know <clears throat> in this system or i, I live in homa near the uh giww and it's like people get complacent uh, when, when a, they, they think it's kind of a minor storm comes through, but you just have to go outside the system and go to like Levo or something, and it's pretty devastating. Um, and, and people forget, right, real easy. You have to be vigilant, um, stay on top of the levee system. And uh, But we have been busy, uh, you know, in the town of Grand Isle, obviously, there's a, a lot of damage to their uh, dune levee. Of course, you know, there's a different situation uh, living on a bear island. Um, but so, you know, I just wanted to, uh, reiterate what's already been said you know inside the system we can kind of look and say well this is kind of a minor storm <laughs> but um it's pretty amazing when you have to take the uh take the brunt of a, of a, a storm surge like even even this you know it was it was pretty powerful and so uh and like i said it just we just always have to be uh on top of our game and vigilant make sure we we, we have our levy systems up up to uh up, up to uh as, 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 as good a system as we can get. And it just takes a little bit of trip across the system there to see, see the difference, right? But, uh, you know, we're staying busy on um, Fouchon and Grand Isle, pretty much took the bonus. And, you know, we're working on several projects right now. But uh, that's all. I just want to reiterate the same thing you guys have been saying. Thanks. Okay, any questions for Daniel? Thank you, Daniel. Okay, project engineers, Michelle and Associates. Um, yes, on our E-South uh, grading and shaping project, Lowland Construction is a contractor. He's uh, currently working on mat uh, moving material on the levy section. He's got a little bit more material to move from the burn to the crown of the levy. Uh, we've been working with Wendell and Drake on exactly where we want to put that strategically the best <coughs> Um He has pay application number 11 in the amount of $38,000 and we recommend you pay recommendation of engineers that we pay low land construction. The play application will be 11 and models $38,000. You don't know mm -hmm. you know that. Mm -hmm. Move on my niche. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm trying to come up with your name. Keep it. Keep it. Max, thank you, Any discussion? All the MCs, bye bye, say aye. 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 Well, no. On the E North uh, Boro Pit uh, work, um, Randolph Shipyard is a contractor. Uh, he's working at uh, excavating material right now, moving it onto the levee section. Um, he's fallen a little bit behind, but he has uh, almost doubled his amount of equipment and work work staff on the site to try to to make up some time. He does have the application on the six in the amount of fourteen thousand six hundred thirty dollars even we do that when you pay that. Okay, you really represent your next to the next shift you know the application on the six in the amount of fourteen thousand six hundred thirty dollars. No issue gentlemen. Move our own second by the road. Any discussion? Okay, signify by saying aye. Aye. And on 
the GSAL uh, SBO is the contract on this project. Uh, he's still working on excavating and hauling material. Um, he's still falling behind. Um, we're trying to, uh, you know, give him a little grace period, but um, we, you know, maybe it's time to have another meeting to discuss that. But, uh, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, he does have P application number eight in the amount of $4,544.48. That is uh, recommended at the pay. Uh, the amount of material that he moved this month was 1,454 cubic yards. 1,454. You put a recommendation of that and you to pay SBL, uh, pay application of the eight in the amount of $4,544.48. No wish it, gentlemen. Move on back, second by money. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I think we're going to have a meeting with our attorneys and with our general managers and you to discuss this talk. <coughs> yes, so maybe if you'd like us to come and bring our information again. We need to look at this. Understood. Understood. Um, on section F, levy improvements. This is uh, pump station number seven from Cloverly Farms all the way to Delta Farms Road. Uh, we're doing some crown improvements there. Uh, we're currently, uh, we did get approval from the state uh, to advertise for bids and we're uh, uh, currently advertising for bids. We're gonna accept bids on December 1st at 2 p.m. Yeah, we missed the before. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, um, yeah, okay, I see. SBL is phase, is that's phase two on D south. That's actually moving the material onto the levy section. Uh, he has the application number six in the amount of $1,800. We <coughs> recommend you pay that. Okay, you've a recommendation on the engineers to pay SBL, the amount of the application number eight, number six, $1,800. Move on line a second by Keith. Any discussion? Okay, six, five, six, nine. Aye. 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 All right, and uh, go to Matter Pump Station flood wall, which Lindell talked about. Uh, we're going to raise that elevation from a plus 13 to a plus 17. Okay, we have a sea level con construction as a contractor. We had given him a conditional notice to proceed on October 12th, so he's been ordering material doing some prefabrication in the shop. Um, actually today, on November 9th, we gave him the official notice to proceed to do the project. Um, so he's gonna be doing uh, some fabrication in the shop and getting ready for the next, probably the next month. Then he's gonna move on site and start putting together the wall. But he does have P application number one in the amount of $32,877.27, and we do recommend to pay that. Uh, and there's some materials that he's purchased not to work, right? Yes. yes. Okay, gentlemen, you've got a rec rec recommendation on engineers to pay sea level construction. Uh, Three request number one for $38,877.27. You always should move by our own, second by Keith. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. And lastly is the maintenance of the south floodgates. That's we're going to take the floodgates out and um, we're going to blast them and paint them. And there's some, there was some, some a lot of pitting the last time we had taken them out. So we anticipating to have to change or to add some more steel from the water line down. That's where it's going to be done. We had we accepted bids on October 20th. Uh, Circle LLC was a little bidder in the amount of $534,263 even. And we recommend that you award this contract. And the timeline, the time running line for this? It's uh, 90 days. 90 days. 90 days from the notice to proceed. Okay, so we, we told them that we would be getting the contracts together as quickly as possible. So if we approve it today, they'll have contracts tomorrow. We'll okay. start processing that and we'll give them a notice to proceed as soon as possible. They put some anodes on that? Yeah. yeah, they have anodes on it. We're gonna be changing all the anodes, all the anode, anode cables. They um, have a bunch of turnbuckles and whatnot. We have to change that. 
Uh, we're changing out some gears and some of the wire ropes that, that move it. Um, we're, we're also, the greasing system was getting clogged, so we're going to change all that out too. Probably. Yeah, and a big issue. Uh, again, we, we're trying to get it as tight as possible. We try to get the perfect time to get it done. But understand, we're not going to have a lock anymore. As long as it gets out, all we got is a floodgate, which means we could stop traffic to food trucks. You know? But we, we've tightened it as much as we can tighten it, and this is a risk. And it's better to have that delay, a planned delay during winter time, than have it break at a time when we were real busy and there's a storm coming. In fact, one of the reasons we did it this year, not wait a couple of years, that greasing, we couldn't be guaranteed that the grease was going down where it needed to go down. And we came to can't take a chance of freezing up or breaking. So for that reason, we had a little, maybe a couple of years ahead. But uh, uh, that's the reason we did. I just want to know where some problems could occur. Yeah. And that's why uh, hopefully we get a lot of runway in and we don't have a problem. You know, in the roads, we were very lucky the last time we did the gate that the winter was perfect for us. We didn't have any problem to go to Minnesota. Actually, but, uh, we got them in about a week ahead of time. Well, we had that, exactly. And a storm came through. But the northern chance of just what I said, you know, if they get criticized, we, it, it, it's, it's the least, least well, damaging of the Not the time of the year to do it. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, the time frame we have to be able to do it now than any, any other time of the year, right? So the goal is to have them back in place uh, sometime late February before March. And they were both there at all? Remove the whole thing. Yeah. You put them on a board. Yeah. 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 I'm going to take them to the shipyard, blast them, and paint them. Yeah. Okay, so you're recommending Circle LLC, a little bit of $534,263 for the removal and maintenance of the mm -hmm. South Flood Gate. Yes, sir. Okay, move on out, second by Mac, and discussion. All the players signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Any questions, Joe? Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Okay, GIS, John. Hey, John Plaisance, the GIS engineering. Our first project to uh, talk to you all about is the AE's Bayou Lafourche water retention project. We still have not gotten the core permit on that yet, but we think we've been moving forward enough that we have started talking with Wendell and the attorney about getting. Uh, servitude agreements from the property owners, plus coordinating the pipeline and Intergy uh, crossing over there and under their lines in, in a couple of places. So we're hoping to be ready to uh, bid by the end of the year. Uh, the D South flood wall improvements, we've had a lot of back and forth between us and CPRA and our geotechnical con uh, consultant. Uh, we think we'll be ready this week to get that done with CPRA. So hopefully by the end of the month, we'll be start advertising on that. Uh, the Gold Meta boat launch ramp, uh, that is a small project for Lowland Construction is building that, uh, similar to what, it, what uh, Joe had. I don't know, was it Lowland? I don't know, Joe, had, it was Lowland for y'all too? For the boat, bully camp? Please all. Grand uh, this Grand Isle Shipyard, Grand Shipyard. Yeah. So the same kind of thing, we're going to raise the ramp uh, over there. They are actually going to run out of time on their contract like this week. But as you know, over the last 45 days, they've had two tropical storms come in and one or two major rainstorms. So next month, we'll have a change order for y'all uh, to give them more time. Uh, the D North Ramp project, we're coordinating that with CPRA and Eustace as well. Uh, CPRA asked for some <coughs> geotechnical investigation for that. We didn't use it to do that. On the other agenda is an amendment to our contract in the amount of $16,100 to get that uh, geotechnical work done. Okay, very recommendation of uh, our engineers for amendment number one to GIS engineering, right? Correct. About six Okay, the Grand Bayou floodgate structure, they have started building the, the actual barge gate. Uh, Conrad Industries is doing that. 
in, for sea level. Sea level is also building the, the permanent structure for it. Uh, they have made good progress on, on the levees, but they've also started driving the actual piles that will support the structure. Um, we have in front of y'all a series of items for y'all consideration. Change order number two for sea level for the structure will add additional vertical width drains and decrease the amount of uncompacted fill. Uh, the width drains help take the, the water out of the material underneath the ground and as a result of that we did not have to use or we don't anticipate using the amount of fill that we will have to do to bring the levees on the sides up to uh, the required elevation. We need y'all to approve that change order to, to the construction contract. Change order number two Okay, you heard a recommendation of engineers to uh, approve this, and it is the company is C level. C -level. <coughs> An amount of. I do not know that. I apologize for that. Laura, you should be on. Laura, can you tell us what that is? Yes. <laughs> yes. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This should be an easy one. It's a zero cost change order. <laughs> no wonder there's no wonder there's not a mile on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a just ask God. This was a zero cost uh, we also have pay request number three for sea level in the amount of six hundred seventy-three thousand nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars and eighty-eight cents. That's for the receiving, uh, receiving structure. That's the one that was put in place for the hurricane. No, this is for the permanent. For the permanent one. Okay. You're going to <coughs> pay change number, pay request number three, the amount of six hundred seventy-three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars and eighty-eight cents to sea level, correct? Correct. The gentleman, your wishes. Moved by Keith, second by Rosen, Cure up and discussion. On the favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, we also have amendment number three in the amount of forty-eight thousand dollars for construction surveys. That is for the GIS engineering contract. Uh, it was originally in the construction contract, but we have chosen to take it out. And instead of paying C level for that work, y'all are going to pay us for that work. Okay, payment of uh, request number two is recommended by engineers to Grandal Shipyard Engineering. Payment number two, three, in amount of $48,000 for construction survey. Okay, item D is pay request number one for again for sea level. That's actually on the barge floodgate uh, struck uh, in the amount of eight hundred and one thousand six hundred seventy three dollars and thirty seven cents. That one, the next one, the one that we fund. Uh, that is recommending uh, pay request number one to sea level barge flood in the amount of $801,673.37. Is that correct? Correct. And that would be for sea level. How by, we will approve it, we will pay it, but we'll be reimbursed. Is that correct? I believe that is correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, all of this. All of this. I want to make sure everybody no, understands what we're getting into. Yeah. We'll come no. back later on if we're not the agreement, the agreement that we have is that we will we will administer all of these contracts. We will look at the job and we do look at them like they're on all. Mm -hmm. But we pay for none of them. Strictly a pass through. It's a pass through. Okay. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. We have a motion and second. Motion by Rolling Hero, second by Rolling Hero. Any discussion? <coughs> And finally, we have pay request number four for sea level on the receiving structure in the amount of $1,290,669.69. Uh, 
uh, early on, uh, just approved pay request three. Last month, they didn't get it to us in time to get it to y'all meeting. So that was last month's uh, work, but this is for this month's work. And what, what, what work is that? Um, that is for the, receive, the permanent receiving structure for the grand value flood gate. Permanent. Correct. Again, gentlemen, with the understanding that strictly passed through to us, uh, we need to regulate pay request number four to sea level for $1,290,669.69. Your wishes. We have our own second by two. Any discussion? All in favor, say five by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Mm, that's all I have this time. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you all for spending all that money. Well, look, you don't even like to spend in other people's money. <laughs> <laughs> and when they're supposed to finish the boat launch or start and go on? Uh, it, it's not a big project at all. Not, would, I mean, they're going to have it done by the end of the year. It's okay, just a concern with some people asking. You I, know, would, for, for I would not be surprised if they had it done by the end of November. Okay. Well, I'd be surprised if they had it, but not okay. a lot big surprise if they had it done by the end of November. Okay. Okay. Surprised, but not shocked. One, one, one lane should always be open. Yeah. That's, yes. That's, that's, yes. That's, yes. That's I'm sorry. People asking, you know, they want to make sure. They will always have one lane, and on the on the opposite side, on the on the flood side. They've got the wide asphalt. We're not going right. to touch any of that. All that asphalt will stay in place. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you let this year. Okay. On the north and south levy project, this is a big project excavating material out of Wall Canal from Baseline to the Old Man Park. Um, that contract with Pontch Train Partners has about six weeks of work left. Um, I've been in discussion with them. And they anticipate starting up that, that final work in the next couple of weeks. So we think by January they, they should be wrapped up and out of here. Uh, on the seaside. Any additional cost in this? Yeah, we still have the, the retainage on the project to pay, uh, which is about uh, $500,000. And there's still a couple hundred thousand dollars of work that we haven't paid before mm -hmm. yet that they have to do. So. But this is not extra, this is all part of the design. Yeah, the all, this is all part of the, the project. It's all okay. So there's no, no action to take on that one. On the <coughs> sea south levy improvement, this is for um, the project from the base on pump station north to uh, the Apache Corn. Grand House Shipyard is continuing work on that project. Um, work is going well, and we're recommending approval of their pay request number six in the amount of $133,665. Okay, do you have recommendation of our engineers to pay? Uh, Grand Isle Shipyard LLC, uh, their request number six in the amount of $133,665. Your wishes, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Move by Monty, second by Bob. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, no. Okay, on the Rose flood wall height improvements, this is uh, going to be improvements to the existing flood wall in the Rose from the corner by the intercoastal canal by the Bush, um, all the way out to the the intercoastal overpass. Um, on that project, we've submitted preliminary plans to the state. They've been reviewed, and final plans for that project are being submitted to the state for review this week. Uh, we're requesting approval to begin advertising on this project, uh, pending that final approval from facility planning. Okay, now exactly what is involved in it? So this is this is going to be adding um, some structural steel to the top of that existing flood wall that goes the, from the, the overpass. Over the core built? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting more yeah, getting more height. So that, that wall is, is about 10 feet above sea level now. We want to get it up to 13 and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then is that our cost? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's, there's uh, some state water. Is this water to Morganza to go? No, 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 no,
Jessica, Darren, you have any words for us? No, no. no. Finance committee, Mike. Okay, finance committee reviewed all invoices and recommends we pay them as presented. Thank you. Rick, 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 Chairman, to pay all invoices as permitted. Second by Keith. Any discussion on this matter? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passed. Hey. Any old business? Any old business? Any new business? If not, the chair will entertain a motion. A motion. Move by mine, second by Keith. And we adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passed.